So we're back working on the 496 today and here's our new Edelbrock Performer RPM heads. These heads have a 110cc chamber and a 290cc intake runner. These are part of Edelbrock's out of the box combo so it comes with valves, valve springs, and retainers already installed. However the springs that come on these heads are for a higher lift cam so we're going to be using different valve springs and retainers. We've opted to try out beehive springs and retainers on this engine. A beehive spring setup cuts a lot of valve train weight which helps with valve stability. Here's a comparison with the retainer that came with the heads and the new beehive retainer. 36 grams. Wow, 11. Although Edelbrock claims that the set of heads are out of the box ready, we wanted to double check our valve seats to ensure that everything is perfect. Upon further inspection, our machine shop noticed that the valve seats weren't perfect, so they were recut and checked by pulling vacuum in the intake runners. Another thing we wanted to fix are these steps in the intake runners. These steps were very aggressive and would disrupt the airflow going into the chambers. So before putting the valves back in, we cleaned up the intake runners and semi-polished the chambers. Here's a closer look at the step and the intake runner. Here's the intake runners now without the abrupt step. After being very patient, we got our freshly machined big block back from our local machine shop, Just Racing. Just Racing worked their magic on this block and it came out beautifully. The overall experience was amazing and couldn't speak highly enough about Just Racing. There it is. It's painted. It's way better now. As far as the machine work goes, the main caps were cut and a line board. It was also bored out 60 over and plateau honed with the torque plate. It was also square decked to the top of the piston so we can have the proper amount of quench. The rings were also gapped and the rotating assembly balanced. Everything on the rotating assembly is balanced within half of a gram. The main and rod bearing clearances were checked and we had the new freeze plugs installed. It turns real nice. It's awesome. Here's the best thing you can get back from any machine shop. We have pages of data that Just Racing recorded, so we have all the specs of our clearances and weights. Here's our rods, what they weighed before, in the middle, and there's after, they're perfect now. The next step is to clean out the bore so we can install the pistons and rods. In our stroker kit, it uses an Eagle crank paired up with the SCAT I-beam rods and Wiseco pistons. Our pistons have a 16cc dome, so that puts us at a static 10.7 to 1 compression ratio.
After getting our pistons in, we wanted to measure to see what pushrod length we needed to order. So the first step is to clean our comp cam's camshaft. This cam was also washed in mineral spirits. Manly makes a neat tool that allows you to measure pushrod lengths without using an adjustable rod. You put the tool on the rocker stud and if you have a gap on the valve side, it means your pushrod is too long. If you have a gap on the pushrod side, the pushrod is too short. Here's another look at our beehive springs and our new Morel lifters. Thank you guys for watching and if you don't want to miss out on the next episode, make sure you hit the subscribe button.